Hello and welcome back to Citizens Forum. Today is March 27th, 2019. I'm Will Smith and my guest again is Don Morris. And you may remember Don from a couple of weeks ago and he's back to explain today uh, another event that we're going to have at the Odd Fellows Hall called the Death Cafe. So welcome to the show. Good to be back. Good to see you. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about, we went to, my wife and I both went to a Death Cafe that you put on at the Church of Truth, right, uh, several yes, years ago. Yeah. And uh, we were, that was very impressive. I have some trouble in my family of origin dealing with the uh, difficult topic. So sure. to get it to get it out in the open and sure. be able to talk about it. Uh, sure. we, we went to that, but I'd like you to explain it since you have been a facilitator. Well, m perhaps I should start by giving the history. Yes, that's The great. first Death Cafe happened in Zurich, Switzerland in 2004. And it was put on by a uh, graduate student who was defending his thesis in sociology. Now, in Switzerland, I'm told there are cafes where people go and, and have coffee, tea, beer, and they talk about uh, other topics. Philosophy is a big one. And so Bernard grew up in that uh, milieu, and he decided that he would get people to talk about uh, death. And so he did. He put on, uh, I think, 60 of them. And then it, it moved to Paris. And that was, I believe, in 2010. And then John Underwood is living in London, and he read about it in the paper. His mother is a psychotherapist who focuses on uh, death and dying grief issues. And they together decided that they were going to put on an event. And uh, it, What year is this about? So That was uh, uh, 2011. So this, is, this went very quickly. It, it went quickly. I mean, it started in 2004, and then it kind of uh, took its time. It got to Paris, it got to London, and then it really spread. It okay. spread to the United States within the year, and then my wife and I put on one in uh, 2012. But I, you're, you're really wanting to know more, more, uh, more about it. Yes. Uh, it, it death is uh, a vital topic that we're all hesitant to talk about, and we're better talking about it. It, it uh, uh, relieves us of uh, anxiety. And everyone has something on their heart that they want to share on the topic of death and dying from their experience or, mm -hmm. as I said, you know, a thought or a feeling. What's unique about the Death Cafe is that, first of all, it's a pop-up cafe. It's not for profit. You, you don't pay to go there except maybe to cover cost. And there are no, in its pure form, there are no topics. You're not given a topic to talk about. It's designed so that you do share what's up for you. And the people who are leading are, don't have any interest in uh, uh, what you do. They, they won't lead you to any product. They won't lead you to a, uh, any professional service. It's an opportunity for all of us to go to a, 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 a comfortable environment where everybody agrees that confidentiality is the most important thing. We agree that we're not going to uh, uh, hog the time and, 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 and uh, drain other people, and we're not going to comment or judge other people. So uh, it begins with people, generally like four to six people at a table, and the rounds maybe are 20, 25 minutes, and conversation flows. And it's very informal then, so there's yes. coffee and tea and... Well, that's kind of the trademark, is that you can be assured there's going to be cake and tea and okay. coffee and, and some finger foods, yes. Yeah. And so how long does the, the whole thing last? A couple hours then? A couple of hours, I'd say. I'd say a couple of hours. What's, what's unique about it is that in, instead of hiding uh, uh, death and leaving it to priests and uh, uh, religious uh, leaders and funeral directors to uh, uh, talk to about, we, the people, are taking it on yes. and our own initiative. 
And I think it's very, very timely. I think people kind of get that the more we can normalize the reality of death, uh, the uh, uh, more fully we're going to live our life because we're, we're dealing with it, we're talking about it. So generally, it's pretty upbeat uh, environment, especially when it's, it's over with. People feel as if they've let go of something. So that's, what, what kind of feedback do you get from people about what they, what they got out of it uh, typically? Can you make any comments on that? Well, it's kind of hard to, to, to generalize. There's a, uh, 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 an intimacy. People are safe to share because they agree to confidentiality. And there's a bonding. There's kind of like a very special kind of bonding among, that happens amongst people. Uh, and, and first of all, we're connecting with our very deep self. We're sharing some very intimate, uh, scary thoughts and, and painful experiences with others. And mm -hmm. people are receptive because they're told, don't comment, just listen. And so there's a bonding. And, and, and that feels really good. So who would it, would it be? It's, it's open to everybody. But would young people be uh, benefited by going to this as well as older of people? Of course they would be benefited if they're motivated to go there. Uh, you know, most young people are so into life that uh, they don't be, are not that uh, self-reflective. Uh, so most of the people that come are in their late 30s and 40s, 50s, and, and, and up, from, up from there. I would say the average age is probably uh, from my experience uh, in the late 50s. Late 50s, okay. Well, yeah, I know, I mean, I'm 63 and I've started thinking about looking back at my life and, and you know, thinking about death and if I got everything done that I wanted to get done. But I think also, uh, the thing I like about this, after, especially after having attended your home funeral practicum, is it just, it just let me uh, stand back and look at my own attitudes and look at generally what's happening. I think everybody on the planet is, is changing their mind about death. I think it's, we're going through some kind of a, a transformation where people are really thinking about that. What does this really mean? Why are we so afraid of death? Because we don't need to be afraid of it. There does appear to be a paradigm shift underway. And it, it, it's as if we're people, pockets of people, more and more people, uh, are willing to bring more love than fear to right. the topic. And once we do that, we become much more open-minded and open-hearted and in the present moment. Right, yeah, so in the present moment. I, it's a good thing. I believe uh, we all really want to uh, live that much fuller and uh, 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 talking about death, it's got its own magic to it. And uh, what I like about it, this is that it's a grassroots movement. Mm -hmm. It's not led by uh, uh, medical people or uh, people with PhDs or therapists uh, or anyone who's wanting a following or wants to lead you to any uh, product or, or conclusion. And just like your Carolyn, okay? And she's going to put it on, you know? It's uh, everyday wonderful. Yeah, it it, it uh, makes you realize that, I mean, we've talked about it many times since then, and that's why she wants to do it. And so we're, we're putting this on. It's uh, on Monday, April 15th at 7.30 p.m. at the Oddfellows Hall on Douglas. And I'll put up more information about it on the screen here. But do you have anything else well, you want to you, tell you about? You know, the, the Death Cafe is, belongs to the people. Um, and anyone it's a social franchise i like that idea social franchise. social franchise and anyone can put one on you can invite people over to your house and and put on a cafe by first going to deathcafe.com downloading the pdfs they're very okay. simple they're very clear i'll put Just, that up too yeah yeah and uh, that's the way to go forward with it but i i they're on the website they have one major objective, and I, I'd like to share that with everyone, and that is, is to increase awareness of death with a view to helping people make the most of our finite lives. Yeah, death is, death is a part of life, and I think we've got, with our industrialization, uh, we've sort of, you got away from 
death being part of the family life, mm -hmm. and we pushed it off into the to the specialists, mm -hmm. and now it's coming back. Mm -hmm. That's a it's a natural it's, human it's, it's, experience, and yes, it, it is. You know, we're evolving. I mean, this, this the world is a mess. The environment's a mess. There's greed and 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 corruption. I, it's a mess, but. I believe with these stresses, human beings are evolving and realizing that love is more powerful than fear. And if yes. we can just go 51% love, 49 fear, we're going to be good. Well, that's great. I, I love uh, having guests that have a positive thing to say. So thank you very much yeah, for being on the show. It's always a pleasure to be <laughs> with you. So I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks thank for you. watching this segment of Citizens Forum.